My name is Mita Chohan, and I've been appointed by the Mayor's Office to deliver this series of webinars and workshops to enable you to engage with the design brief and in the use of SketchUp, a 3D modeling tool. The challenge was officially launched on the 8th of November, inviting young Londoners aged 11 to 24 to meet the challenge. For full details, please go to the web link. Two sites have been identified in the Royal Docks of East London to give students aged 19 to 24 to create their master plan for a sustainable community village. For younger students, there are two age categories, 11 to 15 and 16 to 18, inviting submissions to design a sustainable home for the future. Entrants will be able to choose a site close to the new City Hall at the Royal Docks to master plan a new neighbourhood and or design a home. There will be four key themes that feature throughout all the aspects of the challenge. Making places, sustainable transport, building housing, green energy, climate change. Please send your submissions to designchallenge at london.gov.uk. Entries can be submitted from Monday, 7th February 2022 until midnight on Friday, 6th May 2022. Phase 1 framework sets out the first five webinars and provides step-by-step -step training on how to use the 3D modelling tool SketchUp. The knowledge categories are embedded within the webinar outcomes and will enable learners to develop softer skills such as teamwork, problem solving and confidence building. Each school will be issued with Trimble SketchUp Studio Server license for the six month period of the challenge and our partners Amtech will be providing technical help and support. An individual license will be provided for individual students from higher education. The SketchUp program should be fully installed on your system to allow students to engage with the webinars. The first webinar will, will help participants engage with the challenge and how to create ideas using sketching techniques with felt tip pens, pencils and sketchbook. It will also show you how to create a mood board and spatial design standards for creating an inclusive home. Webinars 2 to 5 provides stage by stage tutorials using SketchUp and their layout book to present initial design ideas. Phase 2 framework will provide more in depth training, particularly for higher education students and educators, in the use of SketchUp including how to incorporate Sephira environmental analysis software to create sun and light studies. The three workshops are designed to support the webinars. The first will take place on the 19th January 2022 at the University of London. The workshops are primarily for educators with a maximum 30 entrants. Should space be available, we are happy to extend this to higher education students. The web links provide you with information to enable you to understand the contents of the design challenge and explains the three age group categories. Contact name and email addresses should you have any queries or support. Essential reading list.
Schlitten denn? So, in today's web webinar, our agenda is, first of all, we're going to be talking about the introduction to the design challenge itself. So, we'll be outlining the categories. Uh, we'll be looking at uh, both sites A and B. Um, then, in part one, we'll be looking at how we will evaluate the site. So, we're going to consider the site constraints, flood risks, sustainable challenge, and that will lead to classroom activity one. In part two, we'll be looking at space and place. So we, we, we will be talking about the inclusive home. We will things such as the key points for the home for the future. And then that'll be followed by a second classroom activity. And finally, in order for you to engage with the challenge, uh, we'll be looking at sketch drawing techniques, and how to create a mood board. So let's just talk about how we're going to be evaluating the site. So part one, we're looking at site constraints. We're going to talk about flood risk. We're going to talk about the sustainable challenge. And we're going to talk about uh, uh, how we will engage with this by, in, by, by having a, glass, a classroom group activity. But before we start, let me introduce you to George Clark, uh, who's going to tell you more about the, uh, the challenge. And hopefully that, that George will, uh, uh, will articulate a lot better than I can exactly what, 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 what has been proposed. Hi everyone, I'm George Clark, and I'm thrilled that together with my educational charity, Morby, I'm teaming up with the Mayor of London to host and deliver this amazing new design challenge. An opportunity for young Londoners to have a real impact on their city. Honestly, I'm absolutely buzzing about this. We want young Londoners to be really inspired and come up with innovative ideas to tackle some of the most pressing issues the city is facing when it comes to the provision of high quality, affordable, energy efficient and truly sustainable housing. Now it's essential that young people have a say in shaping their future homes and the places and the communities in which they live. And they never fail to amaze me with their imagination, their passion, their talent when I ask them to design truly innovative homes within a master plan. Now I set up Moby to create a generational shift in home building, to transform an industry that needs to be cutting edge, pushing the boundaries of innovation and making our homes the greenest in the world. The way we build and use our homes today is currently really damaging to the environment and that really has to change and fast. We need homes that will work with nature, not destroy it. Now, Moby and its partners provide the education and the training needed to bring about this massive change. And who knows, maybe you might take up a career in architecture, design, construction, and the built environment. For me, that would be really incredible because we need new and exciting talent. Now, very rarely in London do opportunities like this come up to look at a part of the city that needs to be transformed. And that's what we're looking to do at the Royal Docks. The Mayor's moving City Hall there, that makes a whole new shift in difference to East London and the brief that we've created asks young Londoners to show house builders and developers and planners what kind of homes and communities they really want to live in on sites close to the new City Hall and the East London's Royal Docks. This is unbelievably exciting and in a few months time I genuinely can't wait to look at the entries with my fellow judges. I really hope you enjoy the challenge. Good luck and have fun. Thank you, George. So the design challenge itself, there, there are two sites all allocated, one, both of them down at the Royal Docks. So the first one is, is, is Silo D, which is about 2.4 hectares. Um, and the other site is, is, Can is Canning Town. Site A is very is very much for the uh, the entrance for re re regarding from, from from schools. So that's going to be the eleven to fifteen, the sixteen to eighteen year olds. While site B is very much for the uh, the undergraduates. So that's the nineteen to twenty four age group. 
So today is uh, we're, we're going to most, mostly talk about uh, site A. Uh, so 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 site site silo D. Um, what happens is it's a, it's actually located um, with within the royal docks. It's 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 uh, the the aspect of the site is actually north facing in into the. Uh, uh, in, into into the into the canal with uh, with 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 a service road to the south of the site. The main interest on the site itself is that there is this grade one, grade two listed building, which which is which is the which is the uh, former silo, which was built which was built in the nineteen twenties. So and this is that building that the uh, that the. Uh, the 19 to 24 year olds also have had the opportunity to actually consider uh, how how they would how they would refurbish that that building and to make that into homes itself site b canning town is it it is it is it is a little bit to, to the west around, around the corner um and and that is a much more complex site So the first thing we need to consider when we're actually viewing the site itself is is to understand um, the 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 environmental impact on the site itself. So this is something which really that, that perhaps we might consider that that those people who 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 enjoy geography will uh, well hopefully that will will will, will enjoy um, looking into. So uh, I've included the. This map here, which which is from flood map for for planning, which is from the the the, the UK government, um, and so what happens is is that uh, what was identified within the site is the fact that, that this whole area is actually is susceptible to 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 flooding to flooding itself. What we've got to think about really is to. Uh, that with global warming of 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 how level how high that, that water that water is going to rise and the effect it's going to have on the on the environment itself. So just to give you a little more detail, um, here is the copy of the illustration which shows exactly where the listed building is in relationship to to the area itself. So so we have the area known as Silvertown to the to the right. Um, and to the north is the uh, is is the custom house for Excel. If we look at the site in more detail, uh, how big is the site going to be? So there are things that 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 we need to think. So so I've I've drawn a, a six hundred millimeter radius around the site itself, so you can see exactly of of how much that that's going to take in. The in the inner red circle um, is is somewhere somewhere in the region of a uh, of of a of a four hundred millimeter diameter uh, radius. So it's it so 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 you can understand the contrast between the two. So what we need to consider first of all when we're actually analysing the site are certain things. First of all, we need to understand where the sun passes. In other words, where where the, where the sun rises and where the where the sun sun sets, and that's going to you know enable you to actually understand the the the, the effect that that sun will have on the on 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 the on the housing itself. We also need to consider how the site is is serviced by public transport. We need to think of things such where are the schools within the facility. How far do you need to go in order to actually access the the, the schools? Um, and also things such as recreation facilities and parks. And finally, things that we need to consider is buildings of historic interest. So if you consider that that on the site itself is is the listed building. So when we are looking at the scheme itself, we are not allowed to actually take that building down um, so we've got to consider its constraints we need to consider um, how how our how our proposals will 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 tie in with that so viewing the site in 3d um, I, what I've done I've actually uh, broken the site down in into in, into four blocks uh, the biggest block is, is, is one showing in yellow, which is around about 4,400 square metres. 
um, and the smallest one is the one to, in purple to the far side which is about two and a half thousand square meters so viewing the site itself as as a, as a, as, a, as a section you can see the um, the height of the uh, of the existing silo building which is on uh, which, which which takes center stage of the site itself so predominantly that building itself is over 20 meters high and it's 30 meters wide if you look at the 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 section views you'll see that there are uh, four blue shading lines each one of those will represent a one meter rise in, in the water levels. Now, if you consider that with global warming, the prediction is by 2050, the, that the water level can actually rise by as much as three meters. So the fact is that we need to consider how we would actually combat that um, and actually design our our project so so that uh, that 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 we, that we can that we can handle the any any potential flooding the illustration itself actually again highlights the uh, the four sites so we have site a we have part a sorry uh, which is 4000 we have part b which is 2600 we have part we have part c which which is again is four and a half thousand and then we have part d uh, which which is two and a half thousand to the south of the site we have this main through road pa passing through to the west of the site we have existing housing scheme um, and what is between the road and the site itself is is these areas which are dedicated for uh for for future landscaping so what we can do we can use the shapes I, I i've indicated on there to actually help you actually map out your ideas uh, but the five meter grid will actually enable you to actually think about the space and and so that without without need to engage with any software you can actually carry out a very very quick analysis of of, of, the, of the site itself so this is looking the site here and in, in, in a slightly bigger detail uh, so it's quite clearly from here the, uh, the 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 four areas within the site itself we can see where where north point is and so hopefully that will enable you to start thinking well how many houses can i get onto the site what kind of things do i need to actually include um uh, with 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 within our design so when we set, when we are thinking about ideas is if you use the five five the five meter grid that will enable you then to actually to to identify how how this how the spaces are so very quickly you you can actually you might want to cut out some some little tiny cardboard models um, and shapes and actually just move them around and play around and actually think well well how how many how how many ground floor bases can I actually get on the site itself and so we also need to think about the spaces that we require so. For a single person, you're gonna you're gonna need somewhere like sixty square meters, and a family home will is is that is that we're gonna need at least a hundred square meters of space. We also need to think of the fact is that when we are planning out the site, is that what we don't want to have it is for wall to wall build buildings all the way around. We we need to actually have have some green space in there. We need to actually have some kind of communal spaces in there. So the factor is that that we really want to consider the the guidance for, and, and the planning law when we're looking at development. What they normally say is the fact is that when you have a site um, of this size, is that the maximum number of building space that you can have in relation to the site itself is twenty five percent. So that's giving you spaces around that for recreational spaces, gardens, car parking, um, and. And and other and, and other such uses around the site, so that that will actually and 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 enhance enhance the community itself. We also need to consider how 
we, we're going to prevent the site from flooding. What are we going to do with the surface water? How can we actually uh, protect the site? What happens to the water itself uh, that, that's going to run away? So we might consider uh, having un un underground uh, 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 channels that, that the water can, can, can collect into. And therefore what happens is we can actually control the, the, the runoff. And so the factor is, is that we also might consider of how much green space that we're going to put in. So we might consider actually putting green roofs onto the buildings itself, which again uh, will actually en en enable the, uh, the water when it runs off to actually to run off at a, much, at a much slower rate. But we also can actually use the green roofs itself to actually to reduce the, 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 the carbon footfall re re regard, regard the development itself. So, but the first thing we need to do um, is to start thinking about our own environment. So, the the, the John Egan in two thousand and four was actually committed, uh, commissioned by the deputy prime minister, um, and to consider the, the the process that we that that we need to think about when when considering a sustainable development. So, we need to have something that's go, that that's going to need the need the needs. The, the, the needs of future generations. And so what Egan was suggesting that sustainable communities must must be must be diverse. Uh, they, they, they must consider the future of the residents, their children and others. And so by offer, by offering a choice, uh, so we can actually create sustainable and, 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 a, and a community which must a make effective use of natural resources, B enhance the environment the, the environment and C strengthen the economic prosperity. And so what we're going to do we're going to we're going to use this wheel. So uh, and the idea is for for pupils to actually form small groups and to use a survey to discuss their existing home environment and try to answer and try to answer the questions because it is by looking at our own environment can we can we actually evaluate what what we like about it and what we don't like about it so the exercise itself um, will ask at the end of the day to formulate what your likes and dislikes and literally uh, what what you would like to include uh, with 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 it with it within within the design challenge um, and so the fact is that, that we're going to start off by actually discussing the, the, the existing home environment. So what's happening is that there are a series of questions uh, from, from A to H. So the first one is talked about, about the, is it a sustainable community? So it gives you the, op the opportunity to actually circle between one and six, which means one is very good and six is very poor. And then you can actually write your comments as to, well, does, is, is, is that, you know, are, are we proud of it? Are we, we include it? So I've, 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 I've put those notes in literally as a guide as possible, as possible answers reg reg regarding the comments. So, B is talking about how how well connected is is the environment. So, in other words, are the are the good rail and bus networks to the site? Is it safe? Uh, it is is the provisions for, for cycling, uh, etc. Part C is asking for is it well served, such as schools, childcare, primary schools. What's close by? D is. Is to, consider, is to consider the environmental sen sensitivity of the area itself. So the factor is that that you know what happens re re regard regarding the environment. Are we able to recycle? Are we able to actually save water? Um, are we able to use public transport? Um, and the factor is that that if there are brown sites brownfield sites around which 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 this site clearly is is the factor is what can, what can we do? Um, access is 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 a big thing. The fact the factor is that that we need to think about our our future for 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 everybody. So we need to consider uh, people's culture. We need to consider their 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 abilities. You know, be, be, you know the the mo the most the most obvious disability is is seeing people who are actually in a wheelchair. But there are other disabilities. 
uh, on top of that that you that you can't see um, definitely is 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 is, de is definitely one and there and that and there and there are other disabilities uh, that that would that we that we need to actually consider uh, a thriving economy is that i mean are we able to have 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 you know what can we do to promote jobs so the factor is that that what you might consider with with within within the site itself is the fact is that you might actually have uh workshops which 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 are with 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 within the uh, the site itself so people don't have to go very far for, for work is that is that you can have a community where 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 where, where, you, where you can have various artisans who can actually support can support the community um the, the 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 design and build so understanding really as to the, the the houses where you live are they attractive are they safe are they useful and the factor is really is with no with with within that evaluation is that uh, what is, is is the public space um is it an area of character so there are these the these questions were the ones that were actually were put together in order when that when or the criteria that we need to think about when we're actually evaluating our community and the final one we have it is is active inclusive and safe so if, you know you know a feeling of good community spirit um are, what you know other is it is, is is it friend is it a friendly is it is, is it friendly uh play, play place to be um is is the levels of low crime so we have those questions so by and by answering those questions itself and evaluating them to to where to where where we live it's given us a better understanding as to well these are the things that we want to improve these are the things that we want to adopt So in part two, space and place, we're going to talk about the inclusive home. We're going to talk about the key points that, that we need for the home for the future. Um, and so what, what we're going to do is to actually consider uh, what, what, what the classroom activity would be in order to actually create space and place. What is real sustainability? It is understanding the full and lasting impact of our design choices and reducing the carbon footprint over the building's entire lifetime, from cradle to grave. Two phrases you will often hear are embodied carbon and operational carbon. Embodied carbon is the amount of carbon emitted during the creation of the building and its materials. Operational carbon is the amount of carbon emitted during the life of the building and maintaining those materials. The building industry is focused on decarbonisation. The current method for measuring the CO2 impact of each material is through a life cycle assessment using Environmental Product Declarations, or EPDs for short. Unfortunately, EPDs assume the study period for a building's life is only 60 years, which is just 1% of the age of the oldest fired bricks in the world made 6,000 years ago and are still here today. This is important because durable products with extensive longevity such as clay brick prolong the expected life of a building, resulting in a lower carbon footprint for every year of use. Brick can then go on to be reused and recycled to live a second and sometimes even third life or more, benefiting multiple generations. We often hear the brick industry say clay products last over 200 years. This is more than three times longer than EPDs measure the carbon impact. Therefore, designers do not receive life cycle assessments reflective of the true lifespan of their building. Brick is non-toxic and requires little to no maintenance. It's non-combustible and improves the thermal and acoustic building values, equating to zero operational carbon. Other building materials need much greater levels of maintenance, often reliant upon chemical processes which lead to a considerably higher operational carbon footprint. Many of these non-clay materials will often require complete replacement several times over a building's 200-year lifespan, multiplying both the embodied and operational carbon footprints several times over. In reality, when measuring your building's design over its true lifespan, clay brick is one of the least carbon-intensive building materials you can use. 
At Michaelmersch, we know exactly what goes into creating our products and meticulously calculate the embodied carbon figures, providing completely transparent data from extraction to drying, firing and delivery. To be truly sustainable, we believe in designing buildings that are both adaptable and multi-generational, so that the environment and our children's children will benefit from the choices we make today. Think longer. Design for 200 years, not 20. So I hope that uh, video actually probably explains more about sustainability and I think the illustrations and the animation there that uh, convey, convey that very, very well. Um, so other things that we need to think about. So we, we, we you know, to get, in, to get ideas, we need to look at inspirational design. We need to consider um, uh, what, what is out there that, that, that enables us to think, yeah, I, 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 I like that. Um, I brought up a couple of examples. Uh, some of them are actually fairly recently. Um, the first one that on the top left-hand left -hand corner is the, is the development by Urban Splash, which was designed by, by George Clark's practice. Um, and, that, and that was completed um, in 2018-2019. Um, and that was built on, on the Old Smith's docks in, in Newcastle-upon-Tyne. The second illustration is a schematic scheme that was done by John Robertson Architects. Uh, for this, they've actually used ARCHICAD, uh, Arch so, so, so my apologies, SketchUp, uh, for the, uh, uh, for, to, to actually for, for, for the, for the modelling itself. Um, and, 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 and the scheme itself considers the use of, of city centre living. And you can see from the illustration, there's actually lots of green space with, 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 within, within that development, not just at ground level, but also at high level as well. This illustration is an RIB competition winner, uh, looking at looking at sustainable looking at sustainable design. And the final the final illustration is this is actually is of a model um, that of of the bedstead development uh, that was done by Bill Dunster for the Social Housing uh, Peabody Housing Association. Uh, Bill Dunster is. is Architect's uh, design is actually it's, it's been it was quite innovative. Um, he's very very much looks looks at the uh, the, the use of the of, of green roofs, uh, passive vent, passive ventilation. The site itself is 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 a series of uh, of of single person and and two person and three person um, uh, homes. Uh, with, with, within the site itself, the site itself is actually is actually has a connection to to a biomass uh, system. So in order in order to produce the heating for the for the for the for the development, uh, this was actually completed in about 1995. So it was quite quite well ahead of itself. Uh, but you know, and, and I think that uh, you know when when you are thinking about green issues and you're thinking about sustainable living um, I think that that all four of them actually probably give you uh, some kind of inspiration that that hopefully will, will will enable you to learn more and actually investigate more into what's out there what's been happening over the over the last few years is is the proposal for for, for, for modular construction this is where we have units which are actually manufactured in a factory and to and to deliver to site. Uh, what happens is is that uh, uh, we can we can have modules which are run about which which are which are we classify as volume volumetric. These 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 units where everything is fitted out in the factory. So all the light fittings, all the all the furniture, uh, the the finishes are actually all included within within the module itself. The module then is actually delivered to site, 
So obviously we've got to think about the restrictions. So typically uh, the, the um, a maximum width that we, that we will look for 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 a mo for a modular component is 4.8 meters wide. And so if we start thinking about our modules with 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 it within within that kind of framework of 4.8 meters, 9.6 meters, 2.4 meters in length then and, and go for the 4.8 meters wide it gives us that kind of modular process of how we can actually put this together and actually assemble it uh, so what happened was is that carbon dynamic wor worked for uh, with, 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 the, with the manufacturers the the architects for the Dyson Institute were was Wilkinson Air um, and and the scheme itself actually looked at uh, of, of 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 creating these uh, the, the these accommodation blocks uh, on 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 the new on the new Dyson Institute campus in in Swindon. So, very briefly, to, to just to just to overview, um, so. The first illustration we see is the volumetric unit for a, for a 60, for a 60 square meters. Uh, we need to consider things like level entrance points. We need to think about uh, a living room space where all doors are 900 millimeters clearance. The bedrooms need to be three meters by 3.5 meters, so that within those bedrooms there is space for one and a half meter turning space for wheelchairs. And likewise, the same for bathrooms. So the bathroom itself wants to be about 2.4 by 2 meters. So when we think about the volumetrics uh, of the space that that we re that we require for this, we also need to think about of actually creating a draft lobby. So the factor is that when we open open the door, is that certainly we're not getting cold air uh, and wind coming 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 into the property. It gives us that additional um, security. Uh, with 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 within the design itself, um, and so what happens is that so when we start thinking about the space we require, we can then start thinking about about how we will actually put a modular unit together. The modern day methods of construction these days are using CLT panels with a, with a, with a framework, and so what happens is is that we need to think well how do we transport these to site. So this little model here is actually showing uh, is, is actually made up of three elements. The main body is 4.8 meters by 9.6, um, and then the secondary mod module is 2.4 by 4.8 meters. And then what what we're adding is a is a is a is a sunscreen at the at the front of the building itself, which which gives additional privacy um, and also provides pro provides shelter shelter from 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 the hot sun. The advantage behind volumetrics is that they are manufactured in the factory where it never rains. Therefore, what happens is that we can be much more predictable reg reg regarding uh, reg regarding the process itself. The quality the quality build can can be uh, a lot better, much more cost effective. And so, when we are considering the the what. The, the principles by of how do we actually create a home? Well, the factor is that first of all, we need to make a home that's attract that's using attractive materials. You want to think about the tactile tactile materials. So when you put your hands across it, it 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 has a, it has a feel about it. It could be a feel that feeling of warmth. So we need to think consider that that uh, when we are putting up uh, when we think about the planning of our spaces is to make sure that that, that we have sufficient distance between the buildings we have this that we have this rule which, which is called the right of light so in other words what happens within the right of light the car being of the building within three and a half meters of 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 your of your window so if it is then what happens you're actually losing using the light to the room itself so the factor is that that we need to think about how these modules to go and where the and where the windows are positioned we also need to think about the the ratio and the proportion itself
So in step three, what's been suggested, let, let, let's push up the floors of the building back a little bit. So the fact that, that we, we can actually create a nice balcony in the space uh, and so that you can actually look down on the gardens and feel, and feel a bit more secure. And, and the fact is that, that there's that little bit of space between you and, and the outside world, but you're not actually uh, uh, sort of isolated from the outside world. So we need to things lot like including plants. And so be carefully about about their colors and the factor is that that the use of plants itself can actually soften the environment we can we can consider having green roofs um and 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 the whole process can can actually can be can, can be in a lot more harmony so the factors by creating and adding pergolas create where where, where, where plants can grow uh, by creating outdoor spaces, we can consider having community outdoor spaces. And then what we need to think about is the volumetrics. So the illustration you see is that the the this, the single person unit is 60 square meters, that's the one showing in, in, in yellow. Then what happens is is that, is that we have the, the module in red is is a, is a family home that that is somewhere in the region of ab of about a hundred square meters, um, and things that we w might want to consider is the fact is a having what we classify as inver as inverted living, whereas the the living space is actually on the top floor and the bedrooms are actually down down below, and this actually offers a lot of uh, 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 of advantages. Uh, but obviously one of the things that we need to consider when we have that kind of inverted living is the fact as well obviously the, is is for getting from the ground floor to the top floor obviously involves a lot more stairs but we can we can actually consider actually putting in a lift uh, and the factor is really is that uh, with with it within our design we might put, might not have the lift in immediately but we can actually add that lift into the space itself so we can actually have a knockout component so the fact is is that it's designed for 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 a single person lift to go in so so and for, for and for a lift of that kind of size we we're, we're looking at quite a minimal space which is about one and a half meters by about 1.8 meters and so finally to actually conclude our design we need to think about 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 the light we need to think about the windows but we also need to think about think think about the orientation so the factor is that you know if we if we have big windows facing south the issue that we're going to have are going to be heat gains but but by creating a um, uh, a, a, a covered area in front of it some some kind of sun shading where we can grow plants onto it or something that 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 will just give that little bit of of ref of of shelter from the sun itself it will actually minimize the the, the, the heating effect which we which, which which is within the design itself and so when we come when we consider the whole process we we, we you know that that we need to consider how 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 it's going to work we need to consider how the, how these pieces will will actually will will actually fit together so when we're thinking about a design brief when we're thinking about uh, what we're going to do um i found this little game uh, a couple of years ago which is the do what do what don't 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 do what and what happens is that i've actually uh used this in order to to, to actually put some ideas together so we what do we need to do we need to create designs for a new innovative and affordable home we want to try and minimize the use of organic shapes what organic shapes do is whilst they visually can, can 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 actually look quite appealing is that from from a from a cost point of view they can actually escalate escalate the costs so by minimum minimizing the uh, the shapes we can uh, we 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 can we can be uh, more more creative in the in the in the way that 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 would produce our designs there's a little quotation that, that I've put in by Le Corbusier, who was the, the known as, as 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 the godfather of, of modern architecture, um, and he was saying, "I prefer drawing to talking. Drawing is faster and leaves less room for lies." These days is that uh, we start with the drawing, but uh, but what we do now, we we actually model. So rule two um, is you know 
is is being a being anarchist yeah you 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 want to try and remove the rules you want to be a little bit more flexible but the factor is that we we we, we we've got to th we've got to be quite clear what the function is so who's it for so they should be available to buy or rent they should actually have a low or zero carbon footprint uh, we also might want to consider uh, how we, the, the materials we're going to use. Let, let's consider whether those materials have been recycled or can be recycled. And the third rule is the why. So it needs to be part of an environment uh, that, that's, that's going to be friendly to the local, to the local community. Yeah. And why not make it sustainable so i hope that gives you uh some ideas of how to go forward so what we're going to look at now really is is the second activity so the first thing is that what we need to think about uh i mean i mean in activity one we were talking about the egan wheel and the factor is to actually evaluate your your existing home environment um, and from there you would create what your likes and dislikes are and activity two, oh, we're going to ask you to actually look at your home. So there's a little workbook uh, that, that you need to think about. Uh, we need to actually, start, and by, by producing little line drawings, we can actually sketch out what, you know, how, how, how big our home is. You, you might just look at, look, look at a particular room, you might look at your own bedroom. And so the factor is you need to, by, by, by sketching it out and measuring it up, is that it'll give you an understanding of the kind of space that you have. And then when you've done that, then hopefully you, you, you will have sufficient skills and, and understanding so you can go uh, and start researching examples of good design and then you can actually create, your, create a mood board and develop your ideas. So with an activity sheet, what we have so with activity two, yeah, we're going to start by photographing your home. We're going to make a sketch of the room. We're going to indicate the access points, and we're going to record and measure the furniture that's in your room, such as tables, the chairs, the beds. You need to know the, the width, the length, and the height. And so, what we need to think is to how all this is going to fit together. And so, by having this little tiny rec record sheet, is that we can then start by thinking about our existing house. So we've looked at the inside, let's look at the outside. So we need to think of things like, is there, well, what's your house made out of? I mean, has it got a concrete roof? Is it, are, are the outside walls, are they brick or are they, or, 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 or are they painted? Yeah. Um, what outdoor spaces are, do, do you have around your home? Uh, is is the garden is 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 there a patio or the balconies is 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 there, is there any green spaces? What's the overall size of 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 your of your house itself? Typically, the illustration here of the of the of this house here, uh, which 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 by the way is it is it is is a carbon negative home. So the materials that we've used for this is actually is it it is it, is used is 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 used car it, it, the materials actually absorb carbon and 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 it's growing, um, and what happens is is that as the house is built it actually continues to absorb carbon so what happens is we actually create a, car, a, neg a carbon negative house this was actually uh, built uh, as, 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 a, as a research uh, at, at the BRE in Watford um, and our brief for this house was was can we create a sustainable house for less than 86,000 pounds so when we did this in 2012 we actually we actually proved that yes we can um, so the fact is when you look at your house itself have have a think about, about 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 those four key aspects, and so when we are setting up our, our space itself, then literally by using pencils and felt tip pens, we can actually map up the space itself. We can actually take take critical dimensions. So what happens is is that we don't have to write mm for millimeters because the code that we have in, here in the uk is the fact that everything's in millimeters so you just write in this particular case it's it's 6280 which was the width of the room itself so literally is understanding how how, how the space is 
So in part three, we're going to talk about how we're going to formulate our ideas. So obviously that, that uh, we need to think about uh, the methods that we're going to use. Now our ideas can actually come from sketch format. They could come from actually creating card models. Uh, but they, go, they also come from other, other ideas as well. Uh, now one of these products that uh, I'm going to show you is, 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 a, is a product called Arkit. So Arkin is a product which is uh, made in Ireland. Uh, it gives us the experience of actually modeling uh, with with these small models. And basically, what is Arkit? It literally is Lego for grown-ups. We actually trial the product down down at the London Challenge. Um, and so the fact is that, that but if you're more interested in this, then, then, then I, I've actually included the, the, the QR code. So if you want to link onto that and actually uh, go, go, on, go onto their website. If you want to see even more information uh, and how ARKIT's been used, I've included the link here from, from Ricky Song, who's uh, used ARKIT uh, for, 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 many, for many years. And hopefully that, that will probably give you some, ins some inspiration as to how you might want to consider actually formulating your ideas. Oh, and research some examples of good design. We need to actually create a mood board and paste those ideas to actually uh, and think about sustainable materials and what you'd like to include. Um, so when you, so one of the things that you need to think about is thinking about the local palette, thinking about the colours that, that, that you have within, within your vicinity. So create a palette, trying to find materials that, that actually will match that kind of palette. You might want to think about, 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 sustain, about, 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 about sustainable processes. So for example, how, how they would work together, think about the, green, the greenhouse effect. And take some photographs, make some models, put them together. So what happens, you can actually formulate your ideas. So when we start to think of ideas is then simply by, by taking graph paper and sketch, we can actually sketch those ideas out. And so there are various processes that we can do. So for example, that, that, that drawing sometimes is, is a, it's a bit like a musician uh, or a singer, they, they, they practice. And so the factor is that, that, uh, is that we, 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 we can use our pencils by, and the hardest thing that we find is actually to draw, is to, is to draw a square. Um, and so the factor is when we start to think about how, how we draw, we need to think about, about the ratio and the proportion all the time 
and so the factor is that that once once we started off with drawing with drawing a square and a circle and a rectangle we can then extend that into in, in, in into a three into a 3d illustration by, by by extruding the the perpendicular lines in order to actually create the 3d box when we start to actually look at our look, look at look at our ideas start by drawing a square then actually adding uh, a second line that, that that would actually represent the walls it's not imperative at this point in time of how thick those walls happen to be what what we're thinking about we we we're thinking about the space so if we draw for example uh, a 75 millimeter square this this in essence would 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 represent a 3 a 3 meter square area and so the factor is that what we can do, we can use tracing paper, we can use layout paper by starting with the base layer and then actually applying one layer over the top. And so consequently what we can do, we can then add, use felt tip pens to actually color in. And suddenly what happens is, is that by adding annotation, well this is the external wall, this is the windows, we can actually formulate our ideas itself. And so the factor is that, that we need to think about the windows, we need to think about the ratio, we need to think, think about the points. But predominantly what happens is, is, is that by drawing out in a kind of freehand process first, it actually take, take, takes away the limitations. Um, and what it does, it provides that kind of tactile process between and the, the, the coordination. So it's the psychomotor de development between the coordination between the brain, the hand and the eye. And so what we can do, we can then start adding in pieces of furniture. We can start adding in thinking about the space. We can use color to actually define the furniture. Uh, and then we can actually create, it, create, create an illustration. So if you think about a classroom, is that the factors that think, think about the space, think about the size of the desks and the chairs and the furniture and the cupboards, everything, everything which go on and, and actually to actually make that, that environment. It is the same within your home. And then what happens is, is that once we've defined those ideas, we can then start actually articulating them from from a 2D space into, in, into, into a 3D space. A couple of examples of stuff that, that uh, I have done with, with previous skills over the last couple of years. Uh, this, this is some which, which we did with CITB for the Offsite Ready program. So where we're getting skills to start with the modeling and then we took them into SketchUp. And from SketchUp, we, pro we, we, we produce the illustration, but it started off with a with 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 sketch process. A couple of examples uh, of, uh, of the Moby Design Challenge from 2019. Um, and again, if you, if, you, if, you, if you look what's happening here, it's this use of space and place of actually thinking about of, of how, how it works in, in 3D and, and, and trying to rationalize that idea in, into height and space by, 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 by putting that kind of combination together. So we're not using any fancy programs to actually do this. This is, the, 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 this is what we classify as, 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 uh, as the early design stages. And it's from there you can actually take it, take it on. You can then make, make card models from it. And then one, once you are know approximately what you do, we can then go on in, in, into, into actually articulating our ideas by, by actually you, by using the software itself. Um, so if there's any questions, then please feed, feed them, feed, feed them through to, through, through to me. Uh, you, um, and, and so thank you very much for listening. Uh, just as a overview, as our second web webinar is is going to be on Wednesday, the first of Jan, sorry, Wednesday the twelfth of January at four p.m. Um, and 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 we're going to go through the fundamentals of actually of SketchUp. So good SketchUp in a, in, a, in, a, in a nutshell. And so, what Meet is going to do. We're going to look at uh, be an introduction to SketchUp Pro 2021. We're going to be uh, uh, how you would work in SketchUp, how how you would actually start doing some basic modeling, and then we'll actually look very very briefly at the layout book. So thank you all very much 
and uh, look forward to working with you. Um, I've added a few links uh, and contact details in case you need more information. Uh, for additional reading list, uh, the sketch rendering interior spaces, which is the techniques I was just showing you back there, is, is actually is, is actually come from this book, even though it was it was actually published back in 1988. It was actually it's a very very good book. Unfortunately, you can pick up secondhand versions of it now for about for about four or five pounds. Uh, but I provided a, 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 a list a list of other books that that, that you might want to might, might want to consider. Anyway, thank you all very very much. Thank you. Bye bye.